Yo, so welcome back to the inside of a Honda Civic. Um, tonight, hey, look at that! Whoa, green. <laughs> tonight we're going to be uh, doing page up on the boost, and also looking at the uh, quick spill settings, possibly the in-gear boost. Um, but mostly just turning the boost up because we've now got a twin plate clutch, which is vicious, and we've got a wave track limb slip. So that should be good enough for that, but it might blow the box to bits at some point, but we expect that, so that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, all expenses. Uh, so yeah, so we're now going to start the car up and then take it for a drive and add a bit of boosting. See what happens. We're going to aim for between, maybe just over a bar roughly, maybe 14 to 16 PSI. I'll try about 14 to start with, because I think it's on between 8 and 9 at the minute, because the gauge in this car reads wrong, it reads about 2 or 3 PSI less than what it's actually doing because the sensor's knackered and to buy a new sensor is really expensive for an AM gauge so I haven't bothered so we need to look at the car using uh, look at the ECU using the map sensor um, on the screen there and then oh, duty um, there yeah duty maps second left right so we need to look at all them make sure all that's working correctly and doing what it's doing and then we'll know what we're doing with the boost so we're going to aim for, maybe aim for about a bar to start with, I think, maybe, yeah. yeah. We'll see what we're doing, and then we'll just keep... Probably be mental at a bar anyway, yeah, so... Yeah, probably will yeah. be, aye. So, we'll uh, start doing that, and then that'll do us. And a future modification that we're going to do, we need to work on, is actually fitting a map switch. So we've got a low boost and a high boost, which is a good idea, because you can, yeah... Use the aircon button car. that isn't there. <laughs> yeah, let's buy a car with aircon. Yeah, anyway... Let's go page up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good idea. I've pressed it and stuff. This I is where we break a gearbox. Oh no. on the road with a laptop uh, as you've just seen actually and we turn it up to roughly about about a bar uh, it was on around 8 to 9 psi originally and that's now gone up quite a bit so it's considerably a lot faster than it was the heat haze that comes off these cars is well it's quite something because uh, the turbo sits so close to the bulkhead there's not much air that flows in and around it so what I've done is I fitted a Tegua air scoop so let's go and have a look at that There it is, that there is your Tegua air scoop. So obviously, originally, it's designed so as the air is flowing over there, it's grabbing it, pulling it in there, and going in the air filter. Which, I'm using the same principle in a way as well, but what I'm using it for is to sort of pull cold air in as we're moving, just to kind of cool that area down behind the bulkhead, but also to let hot air out when I'm just sat still. So as you're packed up, all the heat can just come out of there if you're sat in traffic or something, just to help it out a little bit. So you can see there, what you have to do is you have to chop a section out of your scuttle panel. Uh, I bought this already feed because I'm lazy and found one for sale. And then um, once you've cut this piece out here, you've got like a gap for about that there, which means that you've got all that area there which air can come and escape. And it sits, as you can see there, it sits quite close to like the, 
part of the wastegate. That's the bulkhead, the metal bulkhead behind there. So I've obviously got that metal heat shield in the way as well to keep the bulkhead a bit cooler. And then because everybody hates gold tape, reflective gold tape for some reason, I've stuck it everywhere just to be really annoying. So yeah, gold tape. Um, so yeah, so with the theory is that that's going to help get rid of some of the heat that builds up in around there because it's got somewhere to escape. So I've also left off the bonnet um, rubber seal as well, just to give it a tiny little gap as well all along, just to get it off. But yeah, it gets very hot under there. People seem to say it doesn't, but I think it does. I think it's really hot. So that's that. That should help anyway, with a bit of luck. Mods are mods, or something like that. Cold taper. Next thing to do is we're going to harden the suspension up slightly. So these are your dampener adjusters for your yellow speeds. Uh, I didn't leave them in the shocks. Some people do. I wish I'd left the back in because you can't put them in unless you remove the shock or chop half the chassis to bits at the back. So. At some point I might lower the shock down and fit them in, just so I can adjust the backs if I ever wanted to. But the front ones, just drop them in, you can adjust them dead easy. We've got like uh, S and H, which is probably... We're going to go with soft and hard, aren't we? Of course it's soft and hard. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put them in the shocks and we're going to give it a couple of extra clicks on hard, I think. Just to see if it makes it any better, because it does have quite a lot of lift off. So we'll just leave that in there. Pop the other side in. Go. And then we'll just give it what two clicks. Two clicks. Yeah, testing some other points can't be bothered right now, but that should do it. So yeah, it's a little scoop. Rubbish gold sticky tape. Everybody hates gold sticky tape. And that's where we're up to. Also, we did notice uh, that the car was pulling a bit of timing last night, uh, but we think we figured that out now. And what happens is because we, where we've got it set on the boost table, it's just clicking into the next column slightly, ever so slightly anyway. So and then it comes back down again. So what we need to do is we need to edit that column up with a bit of timing as well, because uh, it's dropping quite a lot, pulling quite a lot of timing actually. Uh, so it would actually be faster. Interesting. So we'll. Uh, come back to and adjust that at another time and then I guess we'll take it to the dyno and then we'll see what we can do with it on the dyno um, if we could get to about 450ish plus horse I'd, I wouldn't like to be sort of straining the engine too much I'd like it to sort of live on um, I'm not that bothered if it doesn't make 500 plus it's really not a problem to me right now it's just a standard engine and then um, I need to get uh, slick to do as the timing chain on it because it's approaching it's getting on I think it's about 96,000 miles on now and I can't find any receipts for time and chain they normally get done around 100 or when they start rattling this doesn't rattle but at the same point I'd rather have it done now just in case it decides to let go it might not but I'd rather have it done just to be safe so I think in the next couple of next sort of month or two I'll look at getting the time and chain done anyway just before I get to 100,000 miles so that's my little update on the Civic for now um, I'll try and get some uh, videos of it driving and um, we'll probably get back out and uh, adjust that time again in a couple of days or maybe next week or something and we'll uh, try and get some uh, outside car noises because it sounds alright to be honest from inside the car, it's quite cool. But messing that garage. Anyway, so also, looks alright with the car in the background, doesn't it? Out of focus, let's focus on the car. Yeah, but another thing is uh, this car still has the standard bushes in the bottom arms on the front. So we need to change those for polywash ones. Uh, there's a company, I think they're called VTEC Monkeys if I remember rightly, and they do refurbished and powder coated arms with polybushes fitted already. So I may just buy them already done instead of taking these off and drilling out the old bushes and putting some new bushes in because just because I'm lazy basically. Uh, so I might contact them this afternoon see if I can get some front arms for it and uh, replace the ball joints as well and we'll also replace the drop links just so that's all new and all good. And then that should be it really for the front end of the car. I don't really I don't really think I'll do much else with it. Um, the back end might change the rear anti-roll bar, but I don't know. I don't, it's still just a road car, I'm not going to really throw it around racetrack, but we'll see. 
uh, and then we need to look at what we're going to do next. Who knows? Might get myself another engine and build it. Zoom in on that car again. Don't know. See what we do with it. Um, but I guess some of the focus now, for me anyway, is going to be doing a K20 into the Jazz. So that's what I'm going to start researching and looking into. So that'll be coming up in the next few months, I guess. Um, I want to tidy up this mess in the back of here. There's a lot of mess. Let's go that way.